And uh, it, it is, I like to say it's the single best thing I've done for my practice in the last decade in terms of graph growth consistency. Uh, there's a doctor, Marcel Pichon, who's author of the book I just finished, and he, he is a, he's a brilliant thinker about something called patient growth index, meaning that, or personal growth index. He says that there's someone that grows a certain, uh, let's say, 70% growth, that he consistently just grows 70% of his graphs with every single time he does a transplant. How do you get and level that PGI? I've seen, I'm going to show you some case studies at the end, where I believe that I'm getting consistently better growth using these regenerative medicine techniques. And again, no financial affiliation with any company. I don't take any money from any companies or kickbacks or anything. So uh, this is just uh, something I've really noticed. And it started in uh, October 2011 when I was in Alaska and I saw this slide by Dr. Hitzik and I was like blown away. And this is half a, half a side done with PRP and A cell closure, standard closure, the other side without. And clearly I think you see the side that um, is done without that. And so I saw this and I just said, okay, I'm, I got to try this. So half my patients that I gave the option to do, or not half, but whoever took it decided to do it. They just paid a nominal amount. I still charge a nominal amount for it just to cover my expenses. Uh, had outstanding results. And those that didn't, some of them didn't have great results. And I think it's because, you know, all techniques consistent, you may still not get a great result because patients may not grow as well. So I started using the uh, Autologel system. I got great results with this. This, this works. The Cytomedics uh, company one works very, very well. Um, and uh, I just was very, very happy to start seeing these outcomes. So before we go into more discussion, you're going to say, well, what the heck is PRP and what is A-cell and all this? So let's just take a step back and mention it. I'm not a theorist. You're not going to hear a you know, five-minute discussion about all these products, but you need a little bit of background. So PRP definition is a, it's a plate, it's platelet-rich plasma. So it's the it's the pro-inflammatory cells, red cells, white cells removed. It's a plasma portion of the blood with uh, it's and it's platelet-rich. Hence, there's a lot more platelets. So platelets carry a lot of the growth factors, and there are a lot of growth factors within the um, within the, uh, the, the the plasma as well that help with graft growth, etc. Um, it's been used in orthopedics and various other wound healing uh, situations. And then A-cell is an extracellular matrix that is from a porcine or pig bladder, um, and it's acellular. And so this is a scaffold, and they've used it in plastic surgery uh, burn cases where it helps or serve to regrow parts of uh, digits and various other areas that are, that are gone. Um, so uh, do, they, do you need both of them to work well? I'm not convinced you necessarily need to. I just feel that there's each one, I think, provides its benefit. I don't think it necessarily reduces the, the recovery period time. Um, sometimes it can even lead to more shedding. But I think that long term I've seen more consistent graft growth, finer growth, and potentially even if with a few transected hairs with the A-cell present, maybe th those areas are being um, improved as well. I switched in the last year and a half over to the ANGEL system, and again, no financial affiliation, so I'm not plugging any products here. Um, but the reason I switched over was I could titrate my platelet counts and I could get a lot more uh, uh, PRP for the same bang for the buck. And so the concept here is that ideally you want your platelet count to roughly be at about 1.8 to 2.5 X physiologic. Uh, Tylogel runs about 1.3 to 1.5. Regions, which I've tried as well, is a very good brand. I use 1. is about 1.7. And so there's this um, concept that that if you're too low on the physiologic uh, percentage of platelets or too high, that it may actually be counterproductive for the, the um, wound healing. So if you want me to know how I titrate everything, I'm not going to go in detail. I'll show you a little video of, of my just using it. Uh, but it's, the math is a bit complicated. I can sit down and, and walk you through some of those ideas if you like. Uh, but the goal is to try to take some of the pro-inflammatory cells away um, and then have, is, have the platelets around 1.8, 2.5x. The other thing, too, is that once you have the PRP there, you can't just put it in there and then hope it works. It has to also be activated. So it can be activated through a variety of mechanisms, uh, mechanically, chemically, or combination. I typically do belt and suspenders, so I may use, be using a lot of different mechanisms. Uh, if someone's coming in just for hair loss, um, and I haven't seen that doing this consist, uh, consistently grows the hair if you're just injecting it without surgery. But I have seen with surgery, it consistently delivers excellence. So I, I just refuse to do a surgery without this, these products. I think they just deliver so much excellence. Um, and 
The me uh, mechanical elements, you can use, make recipient sites. And for me, once I make recipient sites, that's really good enough. And, or a derma roller, uh, one millimeter derma roller is what I use as well. You can then act, can activate it chemically. I typically don't activate it chemically if I'm going to activate it through surgical recipient site creations. Um, but if I want to activate it, you can use thrombin, you can use uh, calcium gluconate, calcium chloride, various other types of, uh, or you can use a skin laser. Uh, that's more mechanical. But I typically just use calcium uh, gluconate because it's inexpensive, it's inert. Uh, you don't have animal products with thrombin, et cetera. So, uh, and if I'm doing, for example, someone that is just thinning in a certain area, uh, and they're not getting a transplant, I'll put about one to, you'll see this in the video, about one to five of calcium gluconate. So in other words, one cc to about five, you can do one to 10 uh, to PRP, shake it up, inject it. The A cell you'll see in the video, I just mix with my PRP, but there's many ways to do it. Some people put it in saline, that's, that's normal as well. But you just have to remember, you, ha you have to activate the uh, PRP. You can't just stick it in there and hope that it'll do something. Uh, this is from uh, Jerry Cooley's. Uh, this is actually, I think Dr. Hitzig borrowed that one, I, and I'm borrowing now again for both of them, which is the fact that um, A cell in a, works better in a transected wounded environment. It actually, it's leverage for that. So um, it, this is just showing that in a, you know, for FUE scars, for FUT, for areas of recipient site, there's a potential benefit uh, of using the A cell in this environment. Uh, this is, I believe, is this the video that you already saw yesterday, but just to show you. Okay, so we're just doing that in a moment. I'm putting a little bit of the PRP with the A-cell, just a hint of it, just a little bit to the base uh, across the wound. I have a little plain PRP in addition. I just sprinkle it's about a, maybe a, one or two cc's total just into the wound bed. And again, this is just plain PRP on top of what I just did with a little PRP with A-cell. Okay, so we went to clean the wound. I put a few extra sutures in to close the wound more precisely. And now I'm just putting a plain PRP into the wound. And this is going to help it heal very well with the 25 days you go. And the final touch here is I'm using some PRP with the A cell just to help if there's any few transected hairs. Uh, it helps regenerate them, it helps the wound heal. So A cell works better in a transected environment. Or I know the natural question is why do I split up the PRP and the PRP and the A cell? You don't have to. I like to. Ha I just like to be able to use like paint. So I, areas that I really want um, the PRP and A cell, like the recipient sites, donor sites, I'm, I'm having it concentrated. Sometimes I'll I'll have a little extra the PRP without the A cell, and I'll, I'll I'll say okay, I have a little bit extra. I want to put some here. I'll I'll just feather it around it. So it's like my extra paint, if you will. Here's another little video. So we have the PRP and A cell here, and then the plain PRP over here. And we're going to go ahead and take some PRP and A cell and place it with a little calcium gluconate, about one to five roughly, and just squirt a little bit into there like that. And then put on a 25 gauge needle. Make sure you shake it up so the A cell is well suspended, and then we're going to inject it. I typically uh, don't put the calcium gluconate in the area that I'm going to make recipient sites in, uh, excuse me, that I've made recipient sites in. But in this case, I'm going ahead and putting the calcium gluconate because there are areas that are not actually transplanting, they're just adjacent to it. So the calcium gluconate is not going to hurt. It's just not necessarily necessary if I'm doing the areas that I just uh, make recipient sites in. So we have basically uh, about 10 cc of PRP and A cell and 10 cc of regular PRP left. These will be used to set the grafts uh, prior to implantation. We have a little bit of PRP, just plain PRP left that I'm going to go and activate with about a little bit of the calcium gluconate. And then I'm going to inject this back into the bed. So I'm just going to reinforce with more PRP into the areas that I already put the PRP in the A cell just to create even higher likelihood for graph take and graph growth and speed of that. I'm just going to put the remaining about 10 cc's of the PRP into the uh, hair, excuse me, into the scalp as follows. Uh, if you ask, you know, okay, wait a second, you, you had like some PRP and A cell that you're going to put on the graphs, how do you do that? The, the trick is that PRP stays active for about eight to 10 hours ex vivo. 
um, and you would want to keep it at room temperature. If you chill it down, it can be um, uh, not being as active. Actually, Bob has taught me a lot of stuff, and if, if he, I would welcome his comments as well. I'm sure he has a lot of either dissenting opinions or, or contributory opinions, so uh, I'm learning all from my colleagues. So. Uh, but the, um, uh, so I would add a gratitude for Bob for teaching me a lot of stuff. I want to say that definitely. But the, 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 the one thing is that uh, uh, you, you want to keep your graphs chilled, at least some of the thinking, you know, at, at 40 degrees Celsius, whatever, uh, whatever storage medium you like. And then uh, Bob Reese, who, who wrote a chapter also, talks about you need to need 15 minutes for the stem cell or physiologic activity of the graphs to take place. So what I do is I, I keep my graphs chilled all the way up in time of placement. Around the time of placement, I soak, it, just soak the graphs in PRP and A cell. And my staff has actually not found it's harder to place. Sometimes people have mentioned that. That way it's enough time for it to, to warm up physiologically activate without having the graphs at room temperature for you know six hours or three hours or whatever it's it's ideally I like my graphs chilled for that time uh, this is just showing you an example of just injections um, and I don't get always this result so I don't want you to look at this and go everyone needs an injection you know so but I think it's helpful these cases I think is really what changed my mind about it uh, this is a lady that I did a, a hairline lowering on and this is the case after, just after a regular transplant in the middle then I came back and I added, I did a second session with PRP and A-cell, I saw explosion of growth. I couldn't believe it. Uh, this is a, a gentleman that had a, a case, this, is, this case was unbelievable. It took 16 months before I saw partial growth and it wasn't even that impressive. Uh, so I came back, I did a second session with him with PRP and A-cell and I just exploded at four months. And I thought, you know, uh, I know Jerry Cooley has done some studies where he's tried to inject it on one side of the scalp, but his argument is that it diffuses the other side, so he can't see a difference. But I, I believe a person serving as their own control, as extreme an example as this, just blew my mind. And I subsequently have done two more transplants on him, and each time it's in like four months explosion versus that first time. Could have been a fluke? Sure. I doubt it. There's another gentleman that I did a uh, single case, and it was like, you know, it was an okay result. And I came back and did a second case with PRP and A-cell, I'm like, oh my God, it just blew up in my face. So I'm a big proponent of these products. I think they do work. Um, again, I have no incentive to be up here to tell you this other than I, I'm passionate about how important this product is, and I just simply will not do an operative case without it. Um, so just something to, and, and, and patients that have like religious ideas, I try to explain to them about the porcine portion is that it's, it's, it's uh, acellular, uh, it's not being ingested. And I, I, I've even talked to a religious elder and said, look, let's, let's make sure we can use it. And those that don't, I, I just use the PRP. Um, let's talk about laser. This is something new that I've been doing the last couple of years. 